I remember when I got my first paycheck working road construction back when I was a, a teenager. My dad was like the commissioner of engineering. So, you know, it was not hard for him to get his snot nosed kid a, a summer job working construction and stuff like that. My dad thought it would build character. Did nothing of the sort. Ha <laughs> ha. Suck it, dad. Um, but I remember getting my first paycheck working that job and being like, I yeah, get, gotta remember, I think the minimum wage at the time was like seven bucks and I got like 10 bucks an hour, like shoveling asphalt and stuff like that. And I remember thinking, this is amazing. <laughs> I, it must be the same kind of feeling that Christopher Nolan woke up to today. Yeah, pretty much. Because apparently Christopher Nolan's paycheck for Oppenheimer has just kind of been revealed from Variety. And it's a little bit more than the 10 bucks an hour that I got shoveling asphalt. This is, comes to us from Variety where it says, Christopher Nolan's final payday for the film Oppenheimer which traces the life of uh, the titular scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer and his role in creating the atomic bomb, is just south of $100 million, according to knowledgeable sources. That figure represents a combination of salary, back-end compensation, box office escalators, and a bonus for his twin Academy Awards. A representative for the filmmaker did not respond to a request for comment. All right. I have thoughts couple of them <laughs> on the one hand the the more cynical let me let me talk about the cynical side of me the more cynical side of me is thinking back to like say the actor strike which is you know you've got a bunch of actors who work really hard on movies and who can't even pay rent well that's because you got some directors making a hundred million dollars maybe that money could be redistributed somewhere and all that kind of stuff where you have one actor on set making $15 million while somebody else is making what John Campion made, shoveling asphalt on road construction. And that's the cynical side of me. And I, I have been a proponent. For those of you who've watched me for any period of time, you know, I am a proponent that I think it is ridiculous that an actor or a director be paid that kind of money. Like, I don't think an actor should be, should be paid $20 million for two and a half months' work. I, I don't think that should happen, especially when you got other actors in the movie. I don't think every actor should make the same. Of course not. That's ridiculous. But, you know, when we got other actors on the same movie who are barely making enough to take an Uber to the set that day. That being said, there's something about this that I kind of like at the same time. And that is, it's almost like it's, it, Ray, it comes across to me like a sports contract that's really incentive based. Right, all the time. For those of you who don't follow sports, like an athlete could sign in here, okay, they sign for $4 million salary, but there are bonuses if the team makes the playoffs, mm -hmm. if they score a certain amount of points, and if they become a, an all-star, there's a bonus. Yeah. It could equal up to $22 million. Right. Okay. Even like, yeah, because the league also gives you money because if you win like the World Series or the NFL, the like, you know, Yeah, Super then Bowl. you get additional yeah. salary on top of all that, right? <laughs> what I kind of like about this is that a lot of what Christopher Nolan, because let's bring this back up again. A lot of what Christopher Nolan is making is apparently attached to results. Yeah. Right? It's like, okay, according to all the figure represents salary, but it's also back-end compensation, box office escalator. So if the movie makes so much, you get this much of a bonus. If it makes so much, you get this much of a bonus. Back-end compensation, box office escalators, and a bonus for his Academy Award wins. Yeah. Because that, what that tells me is that I don't mind people making a ton, ton, obscene amount of money if them making that money represents they risked making less. So, like, I, I would feel very awkward if they if they just said, oh, Christopher Nolan, come direct a movie and we'll just give you a check for $98 yeah. million. I mean, that, that feels... But when, when it's attached to, say, something where it's like, okay, look... You actually are risking not making that much, but if everything goes great, then you do get paid more. And I, I kind of, I kind of like that that hundred million. But remember, they're about to re-release Oppenheimer into theaters now, one Best Picture, and it could be enough to get it over the billion dollar mark. Nice. Which, by the way, triggers another box office plateau for Christopher Nolan's contract. If the movie does hit a billion, he's going to get another check. <laughs> <laughs> so it's. <laughs> It's 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 a good day to be Christopher Nolan. I don't, also, along with what you're saying, one, he also 
gets writing credits. So he wrote yeah. it, directed it. Uh, obviously, you're speaking about that. He was a producer, so he worked as a producer on it. So that salary right there is split not evenly three ways, but he did a lot more than just normally. Huh. And then, yeah, none of that, none of the escalators or bonuses come out of the budget, so it wouldn't affect any actor at the beginning and pre-production. Right. So, like, his salary was one number. And I'm sure for directors it was a good salary. He's Christopher Nolan. But, you know, he's, he was in a position that he could miss out on money if the movie didn't do what they were hoping it would do. And, uh, and, he, and he ended up, guess what? He ended up cashing in. The movie made a billion dollars. And he had all these performance in, in, uh, incentives attached to it. And um, when you're Christopher Nolan, I guess you could do that. And he wins. And by the way, that doesn't count however much money his wife made on it, who's mm -hmm. the main producer of the She's film. She's also pretty, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the one who actually received the Oscar. Well, or, well, the three of them received Oscars. There are three of them were producers. By the way, same producer, that dude who gave the speech for the movie, he's the main producer of the Harry Potter movies, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah, so that, yeah, this guy's this guy down here is rolling in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah he and he's the one who brought the story to Christopher Nolan. It was his fifth movie working uh, with those two making movies. So I mean, good on him. He made money too. So yeah, when you have a billion dollar film, I guess there's a lot of money to go around. And mm -hmm. let's face it, Oppenheimer wouldn't be Oppenheimer if it wasn't for Christopher Nolan. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video. Harry's. You know, guys, in order to start the John Campia show, I had to leave my high paying corporate job in order to set myself up to be happier and enjoy more personal success. Because sometimes to get what you want, you have to challenge the status quo and blaze your own trail. And that's exactly what the folks at Harry's did. You see, at Harry's, they saw customers getting ripped off by questionable products in the shaving industry and decided to do something better. Harry's decided to pave their own road by making beautifully designed razors for a fraction of the price of the other big brands. Except Exceptional products, honest prices. That's Harry's. I have fallen in love with Harry's from their foaming shaving gel that feels just luxurious on the skin to their incredible razor that feels just as good in the hand as it does going over your skin. They've got rich lathering skin softening body wash and scents like redwood, wildlands, and stone. You see, Harry's provides German engineered blades made in their own factory that stay sharp longer. You can get a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover for just three bucks at harrys.com slash campia. Don't settle for the status quo. Blaze your own trail with Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash campia. That's harrys.com slash campia for a $3 trial set. So I don't know, hey, Chris, you see this. I don't know, like, That's for so you, a <laughs> $100 million paycheck is just a Tuesday. I, I mean, you we know, get that. But I mean, know. for for a struggling director like Christopher Nolan, I, what what like th it's this always is, so good to see a Chris win you it's know? always so good to see a Chris when it's one like of us all wins win. all of us do <laughs> it's nice yeah sense. we have a communal <laughs> fund he doesn't know about it yet but we do <laughs> we do uh it's great to see that he is thriving um I am with you on some of these paydays though that I go oh that's a lot of money for one human being um and I was trying to just because I'd seen a couple people as well do uh like I wonder what Greta made I went oh I do wonder what Greta made and I tried to find that number and I haven't been able to so far but I know um Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie are reportedly being paid 12.5 million each for their on screen work and that Margot Robbie is set to earn 50 million in salary and bonuses wow. but she's also a producer well she was she was so, more than even just yeah. the regular she was the driving was, force behind absolutely Barbie. she yeah. produced all of that she made all of this happen um but while looking for it I found this quote from Greta Gerwig that she said to CNBC of I always have this sense of don't negotiate just take whatever they'll give us because I'm so scared that I won't be able to make a movie I don't want to ask for too much and so obviously now she'll be able to do more of this. And I, I hope she starts making this Chris Nolan money. Yeah. I love that. She Chris ain't on not, Netflix. No, yeah. she, she's not she on Netflix. She's making the Witch in the Wardrobe not with those Netflix. dump movies. I hope that she starts advocating <laughs> for herself because clearly Christopher Nolan is somebody who advocates for himself. He knows his worth. Yeah. And this is just something that further kind of his win just shows that he was worth this paycheck, yeah. right? Well, he's also so established with he's blockbusters. He's very established. And Greta Gerwig is newer to the scene. But she be, has a very consistent there. record and she's going to be able to get here. But I I think that, you know, Rob always talks about this too. You don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. And Christopher Nolan knows this. <clears throat> he absolutely knows his worth, even though he's had a few films too that haven't done exceptionally well, looking at you, Tenet. <clears throat> he knows that he can get paid this much from a studio. He knows that he is the driving force between, behind things. And he has such a distinct 
style and voice when it comes to his films, even when they are more sci-fi, genre-bending, superhero, what have you. It feels like a Christopher Nolan film. Studios also know that they attract talent. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And, and there's no there's no way people are going to be like, I don't really want to work with Greta no, at this point. absolutely so. not. But this also, I think this is another one of those kind of nails in the coffin for his old relationship that he used to have with Warner Brothers of just, hey, these people treat me so well. They put my movies out where they're supposed to. They pay me what I deserve. They listen to my vision. They talk to me and let me do this ridiculous huge movie about an American scientist. Yeah. When you look at American Prometheus, the first thought when you read that book is not, oh man, this is gonna be a huge blockbuster film. This is a billion dollar movie. It's not, yeah. when I was reading that novel, people were like, why? He has so much vision and foresight. And I think this paycheck just kind of showcases that the studios believe that he does too now, now but but to that point charles roven who who is who is the little guy the other producer who won the academy award yeah, with he's them just little guy. he <laughs> had oh, oh what did oh, i say did i say something wrong no he no. said the little guy and i went he's just a little guy oh, just, and, and oh, he hates it. adorable little charles roven <laughs> little chucky um he has said before that he he said he's i can totally see us talking about him and Christopher Nolan and his wife making another movie with Warner Brothers someday because now it's it's not the same people who screwed him over yeah. yeah and stuff like that but I mean but Warner Brothers better be treating Greta well and learn their lesson yes yep and and to your point Chris like hey you know my first film with Universal hot damn look what happened I got a hundred million dollar payday I'm about to have a billion dollar film my first since Batman I got two Academy Awards and uh the Sun is pretty bright over yeah. at Universal Absolutely. I'm sure he's got some problems in his life somewhere. He's got it. Somewhere. He's got Let's go it. sniff him out. I hope Universal gets rid of the Fast and Furious ride, gives us an Oppenheimer one. Ooh. I just, that's that's <laughs> that would be an next. ride. You know, that would be a blast. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.